getting coverage in the now month-long search for Elijah Vu. It's important for the community to, to find the little boy. Very important. And we will not stop. As the tireless mission continues, we are taking a look at the financial picture of this large-scale operation, as well as the updated criminal complaint facing the caretaker of the missing child. Balance News and severe weather coverage. This is Fox 11 News at 5. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight at 5. As the search for Elijah Vu enters its now fifth week, we are learning more about the cost of trying to bring the little boy home. The Two Rivers City Council approved the release of additional funding to help cover the cost of the investigation. And Fox 11 has learned a hearing scheduled for tomorrow for Jesse Vang, the man who was caring for Vu when he was reported missing, has now been changed. Fox 11's Emily Matesic has the latest information. For more than four weeks, local, state, and federal authorities, along with volunteers, have been trying to find Elijah Vu. The large-scale law enforcement search of Goodwin Road, where the boy's blanket was found shortly after his disappearance, is just one example of the hundreds of man-hours that have been put into the case, not just by law enforcement, but other city departments, too. Two Rivers officials have been unable to put an exact number on the cost of the investigation from the beginning, but realizing things were starting to add up. We knew that there were going to be some additional costs coming up. We didn't know what it was, but we wanted to make sure that we had enough money allocated should we find out how much it was going to be. As of now, we are in roughly over $70,000 in uh, overtime fees. To be fiscally responsible while still committed to the case, the City Council unanimously approved a measure to make about $150,000 in additional funding available to cover the cost of the investigation and search for Elijah Vu. The funds had been allocated for two new positions within the city that will remain unfilled for this year. We didn't eliminate any positions. We just decided to halt the position from being filled. And there were two positions. One was a GIS position, another one was a public works. But the departments, again, they all chipped in their part. Donkey adding, the community is determined to find out what happened to Elijah Vu. We figured that this was the most important thing to keep everybody funded to make sure that we could keep looking. Because we did not, when we will not give up. While the city and volunteers are committed to bringing Elijah Vu home, prosecutors are also seeking justice. After Jesse Vang's attorneys asked for a revised criminal complaint to be filed in his child neglect case, prosecutors filed an amended criminal complaint adding more detail to the charge he is facing. The complaint now includes information about his communication with Katrina Bauer, Elijah Vu's mother. Some of those exchanges include Vang and Bauer discussing her leaving her young daughter in the car outside in the cold while she goes into Vang's apartment for sex. The criminal complaint also mentions a picture found in a Facebook Messenger exchange between Bauer and Vang that shows Elijah Vu in Vang's apartment. Standing in a corner, his hands appear to be in a praying position and the diaper he's wearing looks full. And finally, the complaint mentions another text exchange where Vang tells Bauer to quote, trust me, I'm going to make sure he hates me and being here. Bauer responds, don't want him to hate you, just fear you. Vang later saying via text, he did fear me, but he didn't respect me. Now I'm making him respect me. A Manitowoc County judge was supposed to be holding a preliminary hearing for Vang on Thursday morning. Fox 11 has learned that is being delayed, and instead the hearing will simply be to handle scheduling. In Manitowoc County, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. Elijah Vu's mother, Katrina Bauer, who is also facing those child neglect charges, will be in court on Friday afternoon for her arraignment. And as the search for Elijah continues, Two Rivers Police remind us they continue to follow up on all the tips from the public. Anyone with information is urged to call the tip line number on your screen, 844-267-6648. Well, we had a personal finance meeting and we knew that there were going to be some additional costs coming up. We didn't know what it was, but we wanted to make sure that we had enough money allocated should we find out how much it was going to be. As of now, we are in roughly over $70,000 in uh, overtime fees. So that compounding with we don't know where it's going to end. Hopefully it's soon for the family's sake. But we just wanted to be 
fiscally responsible and make sure that the monies were there. And that's how the decision came to bring it to council and, and then vote on it. And when you say talk about overtime fees, is that that's not just for the police department? Is that for other city departments and then outside agencies that you had to bring in? Uh, so far, we haven't gotten any bills from outside agencies, um, but that was other departments. I know Public Works was involved, the Park and Rec. I mean, just about every department in the city was working on it. So that goes to show the support that the city has for everything. Right. So do you anticipate getting bills from outside agencies? We don't know. It, it's a crapshoot. Um, I mean, because obviously you don't deal with something like this very often. Right. 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 And... I mean, they, they can, other agencies can bill us, but we, we do not know if they're going to or not. I think the, the general sentiment is it could happen in any community. So probably not, but we do not know that. But we just wanted to make sure that we had the funds there should that arise. Yeah, so, I mean, the, because um, you already have, I mean, obviously the police department has um, in their budget for overtime. Right. Right. We went through half their budget already, a little better than half. So yeah, we know that eventually at the end of the year, we're going to be short on that end. So again, we wanted to be fiscally responsible and make sure that the funds were there. We eliminated a couple of positions that we were thinking about filling. We're just forego and we will look at that again next year for next year's budget. But up till then, we figured that this was the most important thing to keep everybody funded to make sure that we could keep looking because we did not when we will not give up. Yeah, I guess, I mean, how, what, I'm, I'm assuming, and you know, people said that, obviously there aren't as many people actively involved as maybe in week one or two from outside right. agencies and right. stuff like that. So it is sort of, I don't want to say tailing off, but it is kind of. Um, I know that I think the feds had left. There must, they must have drastically tailed off because they are no longer using council chambers. So, yeah, but there are still groups out all the time and I know the police are still involved and they're still looking. They're following every lead that comes in. Yeah. And I mean, you can't tell them to stop, right? I mean, right. And like I said, we will not stop until we figure out what happened. Yeah. And this was, was there a lot of discussion about this? I mean, I know it was a unanimous vote in favor. Uh, no, not really because everybody felt the same, you know, we're just a tight knit community here as shown with all the support from the people out looking and helping. So we just, everybody on board for, with that. Yeah, and I know talking with the finance director, one of the, these positions, they were new in 2024, so it's not like you had open positions, correct? Right, right, right. We didn't eliminate any positions. We just decided to halt the position from being filled. And there were two positions. One was the GIS position, another one was the public works. But the departments, again, they all chipped in their part because the GIS position was coming out of almost every budget, so. But every department knew that it was their responsibility to step up and help the community as well. Yeah, so even like the department, I reached out to Public Works to see if they would talk just, I mean, I, I think even later in the agenda, it talked about how he was sort of understood that these positions would not be able to be filled because of right. this. Right, right. So a lot of understanding and. Priority number one is finding Elijah. So everybody understood that. Anything else you think is important on topic that... No, it's just it, unbelievable community support. And the city did a very good job helping and keeping everything in line. Yeah, it, I'm very proud of the community and the whole staff, in fact. Everybody did a very good job. Yeah, because it's not, I mean, not just a police department thing. It's right. Been, uh... It hasn't been easy for the community. I mean, anytime you go anywhere, that's, you can hear it talked about. So it's, it's important for the community to, to find a little boy. Very important. And we will not stop. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Just get the tee shot down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I probably never thought that this was something that on council that you would you know, Never. Like and I hope it never happens again. But we're just handling it as we can. When did you guys find out that you were going to... Was it that finance committee meeting when you found out that there was going to be, I don't want to say money issue, but something certain that? No, um, I had approached the city manager and as well as the council president. We had, were talking one day after a meeting, and I, and I had said, 
we are going to have substantial overtime in this. How are we going to look into that now or wait? And uh, Mr. Buckley said, no, we should probably look at that right now. So then our very next meeting, it was, I think it was a Monday meeting and then we had a personal finance meeting on a Thursday. That's when we had brought it up in the meeting and said, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna look at this now. Do you have a number of how much is the, I know you said it's $70,000 just over time, but mm -hmm. how much the entire investigation so far has cost? No, I don't have any idea on that number. I don't, I think those numbers are all being tabulated yet. We won't know that probably till end of month. And then beyond, right? It'll be a running bill, we know that. But we had to make sure that we had the money there to make sure everything was paid for. We were actually quite fortunate that we had the extra money available and we could eliminate some positions from being filled. That helped substantially. Because what do you do if they're not, right? I mean right. Absolutely. Yeah, it was very hard on the community. There's no doubt about that. It still is. Yeah. Yeah, the, just looking back, there's, there's nothing we would have been able to do any different, I don't believe. The police department did a very good job, the feds, DOJ, everybody involved, the county, other communities came in and helped. It was an unbelievable amount of support. But they don't have that name. Right now, I believe that it's right down to the police station itself, down in the back. 